Welcome back, friends. Today is Friday, the 30th of June, 2023. It's about five o'clock in the afternoon. Um, last day of June and potentially the last day of construction on the fuel tanks. Uh, if everything goes well this evening, all that will be left to do on these fuel tanks is to pressure test and then whatever has to happen after we get the results of leak testing. Uh, so I need to get all of the Z brackets mounted um, and then put on the access covers. So the, today's work will be kind of broken up into a couple different portions. There's a little bit of stuff that needs to be done without any sealant. I'll do that stuff first and then we'll get into this stuff that involves sealant. Uh, I went by the airport today and Joe is actually letting me borrow his um, handy dandy little tool for pulling rivets um, at an angle. So this is great. This is gonna come in uh, very handy and will work better than that little wedge. Um, the interior ribs are all being set with blind rivets. There are five interior ribs per fuel tank, each of them with five holes which means 50 of those pulled rivets. So I'll be happy that I have this and I bet I'll be pretty happy that I have this. So anyways, that's a lengthy introduction for stuff that I'm probably going to explain to you while you watch the time lapse. So let's just build an airplane. Well, here it is. Uh, this is what in the van's plans about 108 hours of work looks like. <laughs> it was 28 days of construction, um, some long days, some short days. I think that it averaged about 3.8 hours per those 28 days. But uh, in other words, just how I spent my June last summer. Uh, what I'm doing here is the Z brackets on the ends um, are attached with AN470-4 rivets and um, you you have to buck them. One of them, the orientation of the Z brackets, one of them wouldn't allow you to squeeze it because the flat face of the Z bracket is toward the um, edge of the baffle. But on the other one, it's, it's flipped around the other way and you'd think that you might be able to squeeze it, but um, that uh, rivet head sits too close to the vertical portion of the Z bracket. So you can't fit that. Um, that die over the top of it. Anyways, uh, yeah, so that's 10 per tank, 20 bucked and 470 rivets. Uh, and that is what I refer to as the work that needs to be done that doesn't involve any sealant. Um, pretty simple stuff. Uh, if you go way back, if, you, if you've been following my channel from the beginning, you know how much I struggled through the earlier days of this only six month old build with riveting. Um, I'll tell you what though, um, having done all the main ribs on the wings where all those had to be done with the double offset and the larger dash four rivets, just using a regular straight uh, cup set feels super easy and super simple to do. Um, I, I've got enough, um, sealant left that I think that I did an ounce or I did an ounce and a half in the first batch and um, a moment ago you um, oh actually here um, yeah you may have seen me uh, take the wing off the cradle and go over to the um, or rather the fuel tank off the cradle and take it over and kind of just temporarily test fit it on the wing spar it's really easy to get the orientation of these Z brackets flipped around in your head. And when you're clecoing them on, that's not a big deal because you can unclico them and change them. But when you're riveting them on, <laughs> that's permanent. And so I just wanted to be absolutely effing certain that I did not get these uh, flipped around. Um, so the tool that Joe let me borrow, I'll put a link to it in the description. It is pretty dang uh, awesome for this task and worth the price of admission. If you're an RV12 builder, you need to have one. If you're looking for the tool and you don't click the, the link, um, I think it would come up. If you did a Google search for RV12 wedge tool, um, 
Anyways, uh, these went pretty quickly, and you know why? Because that pneumatic puller was worth all three hours of driving to get it the day before. Man, that just made things... I, I'm so glad that um, Lee Kitson uh, talked me into getting it, <laughs> and it's not expensive. Um, works like a charm. The only thing that I would like differently about it is is maybe getting a smaller NPT fitting so that I can use the the Cleveland uh, Tools lightweight uh, hose that I that you see me using with um, with my rivet gun and squeezer and whatnot because that big fat uh, hose is kind of a pain in the butt. But yeah, that went pretty quickly, so quickly in fact that I was able to go ahead and do all the Z brackets on both of the fuel tanks in one session. I thought that I was going to mix up one batch of sealant per uh, fuel tank, but instead I just did all the Z brackets and then later I will come back and do a sec separate session where I attach the the access plates and then um, just a little more touch up like in the nose and in the corners, the aft corners where the baffle meets just for a little uh, security. I've been looking at a lot of, uh, obviously, a lot of other people's um, fuel tank builds and uh, Boy, um, some of them really laid on thick, and I, I get it. I get why you would want to do that, um, but huh. we'll see. We'll see. I'm very anxious to see how uh, leak testing um, goes with this, which won't happen for a while. Uh, now that this is done, this part, uh, the construction of the, the tanks are done, um, I'll let them sit for probably more than a week before I do uh, leak testing because in a couple days, a few days, I'm going to head out of town and uh, go visit my folks up in up in Washington. Enjoy the cool weather. Enjoy the family. It'll be way more than enough time for the sealant to cure and come back. I don't want to try to let these um, tanks cure for sort of the minimum amount of time before pressure testing. And that's what would happen if I tried to do it before I leave. It'd be like, oh, I don't know, it's been three or four days. Um, I'd rather just let it go a little bit longer. So I've got some other chores that I can do. I need to catch up on small parts organization and I've got some new bins and setups that will help me keep things uh, more organized going forward, especially um, once we get through with the wings, which is obviously a good distance away, but once we get through with the wings, uh, the fuselage kit will have a lot of parts. So here I'm putting on the uh, access plate on the, the left wing, um, which is just a blank plate because there's no fuel sender on there and no fuel pickup on there because this is where we did the, the flop tube fuel pickup. Putting a little, uh, little smear of sealant where each of those screws will go so that um, a seal can form between the head of the screw and the access plate. And then obviously you saw me buttering up the inside portion of the plate where that mates to the uh, where that mates to the end rib. Uh, let's see. I see a lot of people, and, and I'm, I may end up wishing that I did this, a lot of people, <clears throat> instead of using those AN screws, will go with a, like a hex head screw um, because it's really easy to strip those screws out, um, not only when they're going in, but presumably when they're coming out, when they're locked in there really tight with, uh, with Pro Seal. So uh, I didn't do it here, but in the future, um, if I ever have to take those things off, that I may opt to do that, switch that out. So here on the, the right tank, this access plate, it's got a lot of stuff going on. It's got a fuel sender. You can see that the float is not currently attached. Um, and then it also has the fuel pickup. So trying to get that thing buttered up, careful not to get sealant all over the, the nice mesh screen on the fuel pickup. Um, and then here getting the float arm attached. And here's the tricky part. It's getting it installed because that sender, uh, not the sender, but rather the fuel pickup fits really closely. So you kind of have to angle it, twist it in. Obviously it worked. 
Um, this is sped up by a factor of 20. So just do the math and you can figure out how long it took me to get that in. No, it may be, maybe 30 seconds. Um, it's just, you can't just slap it on there. You have to kind of figure out the angles to get it in there. So that's really it. Uh, just throwing a little more sealant um, in places where it's going to make me feel good. And construction of the fuel tanks is done. And I could not be more excited. This is a big milestone that I've been looking forward to. So that's it. <laughs>